Yep, I'll go ahead and say it. This is one of my favorite radio control models that I've ever had. Uh, I did have a lot of fun with this this summer, uh, the past summer, I should say. Now we're kind of flipping right over into the fall season, getting close to winter in Canada. Um, but I got to say, uh, I wanted to do a special on this just to kind of go over it, do a little bit more of my maintenance on it. You are looking at 60 pounds of steel. Everything here, it's really kind of a, a, over the years, we've done our best to make things look large that are very small. Uh, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> uh, but this, uh, this, I'll try to give you a, an update. Here is a dual stick radio, okay? Here is an iPhone 7 Plus in a life proof case. Like this machine is quite large. Um, one of my favorites because of its capabilities. Yes, it is a little bit on the expensive side. Well, a lot on the expensive side, but compared to other models in this industry, uh, this is actually the least expensive bulldozer uh, of this magnitude that I have found. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description box because I know I can say prices. It's definitely over a few grand, uh, but in different currencies, you know, it's it's different, even between Canada and the U.S. So. Anyway, let's get into this so we can have a look. One of the things I want to check out is that I actually uh, have a servo knot sound system on the inside uh, and it's not functioning properly. I have no idea why it stopped and I may just have to pull it out altogether. Um, but overall, like I've been so happy with this machine. I haven't had any issues. I have been told and thanks to the guys at uh, RC Truck and Construction uh, and the uh, scale uh, modeling guys in Utah there as well uh, for kind of giving me a heads up on the uh, track pins that kind of work their way loose and if you're not careful with these pins get in there so you can have a look um, they can actually cause an issue when they start backing out this is a single motor right here that you're looking at. This whole sprocket drive system uh, drives this track just like a full size one to one. Even though guys, I am no pro obviously on uh, full size construction equipment. I've always just been fascinated with this stuff since I was a young kid. And uh, if I would have had a different career, it definitely might have been operating or owning a company that did a lot of this stuff. So I love doing it in modeling. On the inside, this is where the magic happens, I guess I could say. There is a, um, from the robot shop, I ordered this uh, uh, Sabertooth ESC. This is the uh, 32 uh, model, I believe, uh, two by 32. I can't quite remember the specs on it, but that's what I ordered, totally overkill. I'll have a look at it, see if I can pull it out. No, nope, I totally put double-sided tape in, I forgot. Uh, regardless, I still need to get into the belly of the beast, but I'll point out that this is the hydraulic tank right here, right where you'd normally add the diesel. This is where the hydraulic oil goes in for the uh, whole hydraulic setup, yes. A lot of people wondered if this was electric, but no, it is fluid flowing through these uh, uh, lines, of course, at about 20 bar, I, I estimate. Uh, and of course, this is a tilting blade. I did add some weathering in my own paint effects and scratches, and of course, just used it, got Crazy Joe behind there. Had a few incidences when he wasn't around with Rick operating that guy. Uh, but you know, you guys saw it. If you were watching YouTube Gold, you definitely saw it. What a monster. Okay, first thing I gotta do is remove this top plate. Of course, doing this with one hand, filming with the other for you guys, just so you can kind of get a decent view of what's going on here. I gotta say, this top plate that you're watching re me remove here weighs about four pounds by itself, and it's just this. Listen to this. <laughs> And I went ahead and removed the screw from the shroud right at the top here. It's very small, but it's important. I'm going to flip this up. Basically, I can take this and there, up and out. Hard to do with one hand, but it's so worth it for the show. I can remove the whole cab section now. Underneath will be the speaker for my sound kit. So that's directly underneath the cab. I can undo that by simply doing the connector and then you get to have a look on the inside. Now you may say, what is a Sabertooth ESC4? And this is so I can control two tracks 
on one side of my radio, right? Because the way it comes and set up on the radio I had was you had to push up on either side for either track. They were independently controlled. Well, instead, this way I can move forward or left or right, and you know I'm having opposite reactions by combining the ESCs into a track controller. Now, it sure looks like a rat's nest in here, guys. I know, you'd be like, oh my God, I wouldn't have it ever, you know, that dirty, but it's actually a controlled chaos. So here is just where it plugs into the battery up front. This is the part that's exposed when you flip it up and you put the battery in on top. All of this sits underneath the cab and really is never touched. Um, and I have everything segmented out here. Okay, bind mode, bind with receiver, yes. Ooh, I hope that's a good sound. That's never a good sound, is it? Does that mean we're done? Okay, so after about 30 minutes off camera, I went through and mapped every single wire. I redid everything in there to make sure uh, that there was no break in my servo uh, knot. Servo knot, that's the name right there. Wah. Uh, the sound kit itself, but there was nothing I could find wrong with it. Everything was good. It just did not produce sound anymore. And yes, my volume was turned up. So I've decided to go ahead. I'm going to experiment with this uh, Sense Innovations S dual kit that I have. I've had good luck with this. It is a programmable uh, sound kit. You can download sounds uh, to this, and I may find one that's half appropriate. For me, it's better than having nothing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is show you guys something that you may or may not have seen before. Beep, beep, beep. Take my radio for a moment. These here are quick connect soldering. Um, uh, well, quick connects, period. Look at this. This has solder on the inside. Solder, wherever you are in the world, however you want to pronounce it. This kit I got on eBay, I think for 20 bucks. Solder sleeve connectors. Basically, you slide these on the wire, uh, heat it up with a lighter, and it puts the uh, wires together all soldered up. No heating iron or anything. So I thought I'd show you that. This might be handy for you to have out on the road. Not all of these are soldering, of course. These are um, some uh, heat shrink butt connectors. You heard me say that right. My kid would love that. Here's the kit that I got. Super simple. So I just slide it in onto one side, slide the wire once it's all twisted up, in on one side to the middle, take the other wire, do the same, put it right through to the middle. That way they're both joined like that. Take the lighter, simply heat it up, melt the heat shrink around the wire and then keep it on the flame for a second it heats it up it melts and there's your soldering connection round two for the black wire melted and done Okay, when all is said and done, here I am back with the wiring again. So the S-Dual, I hope, is going to sit there. It has a speaker on either side with volume control easily accessible. Um, I can hook up my PC to it later, my laptop, just to kind of change any sounds that I want. But I'm going to go with the default ones that I have for this box right now. Uh, just a few zip ties, not too many, because I have had to go in here. And though you guys didn't see the hydraulic block that was underneath this base plate right here, here, um, I have had to change some of these servos that were in there. They were inexpensive ones to begin with. I kind of upgraded it just with a slightly uh, better one. Uh, Metal Gear, of course, and, and they've held up really well. So no problems there. Uh, got everything I need uh, all mapped out, and I'll just get this back together, and we'll have a look at it. And for those wondering, it fits in there just perfect. Nice. I was actually a little worried it was going to start sticking up here, but it's not. <laughs> Gotta change that. 